Ming and dozens of other students gathered to practice suspension kung fu. Before they learn how to suspend, they first need to learn how to tie knots, as this affects how much weight can be borne. The strings have to be all cotton or otherwise silk because they have to be soft and unstretchable to prevent injury while suspending weights. Uh there are two ways of tying the string. Usually, a single suspension involves tying the string onto the penis. But when the weights of over 100 kilos are involved, the double suspension method is used, whereby the penis and the scrotum are tied together. The tying position is mainly at the rear half of the shaft. Before being tied up, the men have to warm up and suffuse their bodies with qi. This toad kung fu mimics the breathing action of toads and concentrates energy around the midriff through the expansion and contraction of the abdomen. After approximately 15 minutes, qi is focused at a pressure point called dantian, which is positioned between the lower belly and the groin, from where it is ready to flow into the sexual organ. To test whether each student has enough qi, the master will punch their bellies one by one. The most important preparation for suspension kung fu is to completely relax the sexual organ. The simplest way of doing this is through massage, and to avoid embarrassment, the students usually face the wall and put their hands in their pockets to do what needs to be done. These iron pieces are the main implements of their training. The smallest weights are 5 kilos, the medium-sized ones weigh 10 kilos, and the biggest weight 20 kilos. Using both hands, our camera crew can only hold them for two seconds. But to this lot, such weights are merely for warming up. After the 10 kilo pieces have been hooked up, with an intake of breath, it's immediately hoisted up by the penis. And not only that, it has to be swung 100 times each once exercising the entire nether regions so as to infuse the area with qi. So what are the secret techniques of suspension kung fu hidden behind the towel? Apparently, the hardest technique involves hoisting weights on a 45 degree erection. To do so, what apparently must fill the sexual organ is qi and not blood. To test whether students have improved, the trainer will keep on adding weights. The heavier the weight, the more improvement they've made and the stronger their energy has become. The record at the moment is 300 kilos, the equivalent of the weight of six ordinary persons. Today, Mr. Wang, Mr. Xu, and the other students are all challenging themselves to greater weights. The 78-year-old Mr. Xu is about to hoist 60 kilos. As he only weighs 65 kilos, this is almost his own body weight. But even while we're entertaining our doubts, up it goes on his manhood.
After three years of training, 60-year-old Chen Ming is preparing to hoist 100 kilos worth of iron or twice his body weight. Before hoisting, he has to spend a longer time than usual concentrating his qi. And the result? Success. As for Mr. Wang, although he has trained for the longest time, the weight he is attempting is 180 kilos, the weight of three adults. That's why he and the trainer are both quite nervous. At last, he's hoisted it up. And not only that, he's also swung the 180 kilos by his private parts. According to the master, the pulling force is magnified hundreds of times. What we have just witnessed certainly boggles the mind, but a shred of doubt remains. Can this form of training really turn such a vulnerable part of the body harder than a steel? Is there any basis for this in the science of human anatomy? Even if a man can suspend tens or even hundreds of kilos from his penis, does that necessarily mean an increase in his sexual prowess? In ancient times, suspension kung fu was supposed to be the secret kung fu of emperors who had concubines by the thousands. After dealing with matters of state, they would have needed training in something like this to deal with matters of the bedchamber. In Taiwan today, Juju Sun Kung has indeed attracted a lot of aging men as students, and some of them assert that practicing suspension kung fu has indeed increased their sexual powers. <laughs> On this point, medical science adopts a position of skepticism. If that is so, could the apparent effect that suspension kung fu has on one's sexual powers be all in the mind? And if anything goes wrong, what long-term consequences might there be?